sure have you attended any of those meetings? You know, okay, I have some, uh, a few of the uh, working group members here. So we started there. From there, a recommendation was to come up with a, um, a feasibility study. Look at what makes sense. And the options that were presented were either a historical preservation, keeping the development as is, or a mixed income community, re rebuilding the development, adding some density and some other things. And those are the two options that came out of the process. From those options, we brought together a smaller group of, uh, of community folk to develop a request for proposal to select someone who can help us with that process. It was, it was made very clear that the Housing Authority did have the internal capacity to do such a task. And for that reason, plus just the notion of having someone else help us work through a process that we would not seek to do this ourselves. So we spent last year, if you will, with the smaller group working on a process to get to a point where we could actually develop, I'm sorry, uh, develop a request for proposal. But a request for proposal is a document that says that you put out to a, um, you put out to the community asking for services. And because we're a government entity, we have to do this process. The same request goes out to all these different entities and then people, or entities or companies. And then people will say, based on the same information, that each one of us got, a determination can be made as to what company is better suited to deliver the goods and services from that, that proposal. So that being said, a smaller working group built this proposal, put it out on the street, took us a couple times to get through it, but finally we got to a process where five firms answered this request for proposal. Five firms from around the country said, Marin County, we think we understand what you're trying to do. We want a shot at it. Those five firms were then narrowed down through a process working with this working group. They were narrowed down to the top three firms. Those firms were brought in, and again, this is all through a community process. The working group held interviews on those three firms, and the firm that was selected to do this process is here tonight to kick off the process. And uh, so that being said, I want to thank everyone for your work up to this point and your continued support and work as we go forward in making a determination as to, again, what's most feasible. Those options that I spoke of, or maybe there's something else that comes out of a process of community input that says, you know, maybe you should do this, maybe you shouldn't do that. Within that, those factors, the financial aspects play a significant role. So we're talking about what makes sense for the buildings, what makes sense financially, and what makes sense for, for the community. So with that being said, uh, I'm going to introduce Pradeep Rocha, who is the co-president and um, CEO of CBR Corporation. His firm is the firm that actually the committee selected to um, to walk us through this community process. But before I have um, Pradeep come up, I'm going to ask Thor. Thor works for RDJ, and for those of you who've been in this process, you've heard that that RDJ acronym quite a bit, right? So, and um, Thor works for RDJ, and, and they're helping us in the facilitation of these meetings. So Thor is going to go over some housekeeping issues that, you know, around food and raffle and all that stuff. But again, thank you all so much for coming out, taking the time to be a part of this process. And I think on the, the flyer, we call it a listening opportunity. So this is probably the last you'll hear me talking. And we're anxious to hear from all of you. So let me bring Thor up. Thank you, Louis. Thank you, Louis. Mm -hmm. Thor Kislomski from RDJ. I see a lot of familiar faces. I see a lot of faces. Speak up. I see a lot of faces I, I haven't seen before, so I'm really appreciative that you guys came out. Uh, really briefly, then we're going to get to Pradeek uh, and the rest of the presentation because we want to hear what they have to say and mostly we want to hear what you guys have to say. This is built as a listening session. Um, if you guys haven't been in this building before, and I'm sure you all have, uh, the bathrooms are in the back. Uh, you'll see it looks like it's dark, but you just flip on the lights and go to the bathroom. 
Uh, we have dinner here tonight. We know that you guys have taken out your dinner hour to be here with us, so we appreciate that. Uh, we're going to hold on to that until about midway through. Is that fine for everybody in terms of their, their hunger? In about another half an hour or so. Where, where is the RDA? Where is he? Dwayne Jones? Mm -hmm. I don't know where he is right this second. When he's not no, here this not evening. not right this second. How come he's not here? He's where he is that? all this out. I mean, who is he? That's a good question. If you guys had wanted him here, we would have had him here, but... Um, well, we didn't know. You didn't know? Okay. If it's RDJ, I thought he was RDJ. He he's, a, he's a company, yeah. You came with the sword. No, no sword. No sword. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a baba, not a fighter. She was in my heart. Um, okay. Why don't we talk We're after? <laughs> okay. Um, so... We have food in the back, so for half an hour, it's fine for every for anyone. If anyone starts getting low blood sugar or needs some, something to eat, we can definitely do something on the side. Um, we'll take care of that. And then, towards the end of the evening, real exciting, we have a raffle. So, we want everybody to participate in that. Um, but I just wanted to give you those big highlights and let you know where the bathrooms were. We're going to go from 6 to 8. And unless there's any other questions related to those things I mentioned, I want to bring over for deep to introduce his team. Good evening. I'm Freddy, Freddy Grosha. I am co-CEO of CBR Associates. Mm -hmm. uh, we are a consulting firm. We work around the country um, doing work for housing authorities and the federal government and housing and urban development. We do a lot of strategic planning for housing authorities, for cities, uh, and for HUD in the area of affordable housing and public housing. Yes, ma'am. I was reading today that the government uh, or Trump is uh, getting rid of $6.5 million, might be billion, of uh, housing vouchers and WIC and food stamps so that you can build that wall in the next now, we don't need to lose any more of what we got. We don't want any new people. We got what we got and we're happy. Frank Lloyd Wright did a good job. They just don't want people to know it was him because there were poor black people in here. But I want us to be on the record. We want what we got. We don't need anything else. We, you're making big money being up in here. We ain't getting a little thing. Everybody knows I know how to cook. <laughs> okay? We're not getting anything. We don't need you guys. Our community is being taken over by elitist white folks who are buying up these houses. Karen, you're off topic. Excuse me, I was talking, you. damn it! You're off topic. Who are you? Who are you? you I'm start. Excuse me. Let him start. Are you the police? Let him start. Hey, I don't I know who to just like you. Excuse me. We don't, we don't need to lose what we got. You understand where we're coming from. Every one of these houses that comes up for sale, cheap. These people buy these houses, all these little white folks buy houses, fix them up, the Mexicans too, fix them up and sell them for five times the price. We are being pushed out of our community. I don't know who doesn't care, but I care. And a lot of people here care. We do not want to lose what we've got. We lost our flea market. We lost the middle road that we had. I'm starting to bring a picture of how it used to be beautiful here. EPA wouldn't let that stuff happen because that was environmentally protected property. We have lost our community. Don't try to take the rest of it. We don't need any new rich people moving in under the illusion that they're just trying to help. We don't need to help. I, I think that uh, Karen's making some good point, and what I, I would like to, I mean, really, those of us that grew up here really do understand there's a lot of pain in the community. Um, the community has gone through a lot. The, 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 the sense is that there's been a lot of selling out. There's been, there's a lot of gentrification on one hand. There's a, the, the property values have gone up. So I think Karen's making a good point. And I'm here because I, I really want to hear everything. I wouldn't have come here if I didn't think I could make my input. 
I don't come out. Anybody know me? I don't come out anymore because I'm frustrated. And I see our young people have no ambition. There are no programs to raise their consciousness. Our young girls have nothing to do. Our young boys are hanging out with each other. God knows what they're doing. But there is nothing positive happening here. Now, if you guys can't bring here's something to raise the consciousness, how you have to be we, if you don't make any input, you ain't going to be No, I'm not saying not, but let's see how we can actually take the process and then take it to another level, which we didn't do before. Maybe we have an opportunity to But you weren't here in all those other meetings that we've had, going around and around. I know, but I was here before the development. So let's just, let's just see how we can actually be in a progressive place. Yeah, but it ain't going to happen unless you make some input and make some demands. Because we never demanded anything, we got sold out, and the people who sold us out are dead. Sister Karen, you are so 100% right. Uh, Sister Karen, can we just hear what they have to say real quick so that we you can hear what you have to say? Our no, because we want to hear what you, that? we want to hear what you have to say, but let's hear what they have to say so we can hear what you well, really have to say. I was putting mine out there yes. so I could get some rebuttal. Yes. Okay? I'm with you. So you could give some clarity. Yes, ma'am. So I could give some clarity. Yes. I am sick and tired of gentrification. We are all sick and Black tired. Black folks don't have anything of their own that they don't sick a white woman on right. or sick a whole community of white folks on. We, we agree. And I... Everybody knows I'm a racist. I believe in racially awareness. Like a chemist knows chemistry, I know race. I came up in the South. I know these sneaky devils. You're right. Let's hear them out. Go ahead, Karen. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Karen. Right. Let me say that one certainly positive thing is that this is an opportunity for everybody to talk. And Oh, I think if you just had an opportunity to start talking, I, I would like and to give start. a yes. little bit. I am, you're going to have plenty more opportunity tonight and, and after tonight. But I'd like to explain a little bit about what we have been retained by the Housing Authority to do. Uh, because we do understand, we've done a little bit of homework before coming here, and we do understand that there is a lot of pain, a lot of distrust, um, I will tell you that we do work around the country and I have been involved in affordable housing for nearly 30 years. I understand that in many communities there are differing issues, but deep down they, they do come down to issues of gentrification, of inequality, of distrust. So uh, I am hopeful that at the end of the day um, you will feel that this move by the Housing Authority to retain a firm to help with an analysis of the process, not telling you what to do, but telling you the different considerations and what those ramifications of those different considerations will be. So I will quickly talk to you about the team that we have. Um, CBR is the firm that I am employed by. Um, we're over 400 people nationally, and as I said, we do a lot of strategic planning in the affordable housing industry, primarily for housing authorities. We built the company with people who all have worked in public housing agencies in different parts of the country, so we are very familiar with the intricacies of public housing. Together on our team is a firm based in San Francisco called CSG Advisors. They are financial analysts in affordable housing, and part of their role will be to analyze the different plans and the different considerations that exist. And this lady was quite correct to say that uh, President Trump has proposed, it is not a budget, but it is a budget he has proposed to cut $6.5 billion from HUD from a variety of programs. Uh, and that's a fiscal and financial reality for every housing authority and every city in the country. I hope and I think it is not going to become a reality as is because even a lot of Republican mayors and governors have said, well, you know, that's way too much. But, but it is a reality that there is a concern that there is definitely not enough money for affordable housing in our country. And we're not headed in a direction of getting a whole lot more right now. So that's a reality we have to deal with. Um, and that's part of CSG's role. And 
Lastly here, but perhaps most importantly, is Rothschild Doino Collaborative, which is an architectural firm, the president of which is Dan Rothschild, who is going to be speaking to you now for most of this meeting. Uh, we have worked together uh, all over the country doing plans and analyses and assisting housing authorities um, from here to the Virgin Islands uh, in the Caribbean and Puerto Rico and New Orleans. We were part of working to rebuild public housing in New Orleans. Uh, so we have a collaborative relationship, not to seal something from their name. Um, and you will, I hope, see from the process that we have here tonight that what we are looking for is to hear you, give you opportunities to speak, to tell us your concerns. But we want to also let you know that we have done homework, studied. We do have a little bit of knowledge of what you've gone through, not that we can possibly, by reading things, we can't possibly know what you're experiencing, but that's part of the importance of face-to-face -face contact and face-to-face -face interaction. Um, we did want you to know what our, the goals are that we have in our project as an assignment from the Housing Authority. Um, and essentially, we're looking to identify financial, financially feasible strategies to ensure the sustainability of Golden Gate Village maximizing the engagement of residents and other concerned stakeholders, people in the community who have concerns for this, this particular community of Golden Gate Village. Um, to consider the architectural and site significance, uh, which I think everybody in this room recognizes and I think we recognize, and Daniel will probably talk more about it as an architect himself. Um, contemplate the ways in which the revitalization of this community can help carry further development and growth for this overall community, not just Golden Gate Village, but the surrounding area in Marin, in Marin City, and ensuring that the Housing Authority continues to meet its obligations, it has fiduciary obligations to the residents, to HUD, and to its overall community leaders in, in the county. So, got maximize. I'm sorry? I forgot maximize. I forgot maximize. I did. I apologize. I thought I had talked about the engagement of residents. That was starting what we were doing here tonight to and involve concerned concerns. stakeholders. Yeah. Well, who are they? Because They're all of you. And I think it's significant that all of you have turned out tonight. We, as I said, we appreciate that you are here uh, because we do want to hear you, you speak. And I know you don't want to hear me speak. I don't but, mind. I just want to be clear. Okay, and I think you have been. And I think that's that's really important. Interaction is is truly important. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, relative to contemplate, you say development and growth. Uh, when you say growth, um, growth in what terms? In terms that, that the community defines. I understand. I, we've got we we had a meeting, had a meeting with the resident council prior to this meeting. And in that meeting, we did hear about the other plan and stuff. And, and I, I, I think we get that there's a level of distrust. But growth does not mean necessarily growth in numbers. It, doesn't, it can mean what you want it to, to mean. However, let me also say that there is a reality that doing nothing, changing nothing, is a choice too. And it has consequences. So as part of what we're studying is we're looking at this community and this property and understanding that there are concerns about the state, the physical state of these units. I don't think anybody's here tonight because their units are perfect. So, and, and, and there isn't right now enough money to fix the existing needs of these properties. So that is part of the process of growing. How are we going to address the needs that this Golden Gate Village community has? Thank you. Okay. Just to to here. Yes, sir. You are an advisor and an analyst, right? And you're not a developer. We are not a developer. We're not a developer. I, okay. I just wanted to make sure that you know we're clear about that. We are very clear. I am not a developer. I have not been one. I. I'm a recovering attorney. I used to practice law. Uh, I was the general counsel of the Boston Housing Authority a very long time ago. Um, and we have had our company for over 22 years. 
doing work around the country. We often are on opposite sides of developers, but we are always on the side of representing housing authorities, cities, or the U.S. Department of HUD. The best numbers. I'm sorry? Can you come up with the best numbers? Well, we, we try to. I, I will say that, uh, and, and Dan has heard it, I know there's a number of architects in the room, um, but I, I, I've learned over time that there is a reality that you need to bring together uh, what do you want and what can you achieve. And what can you achieve is often factored in with one heavy factor, which is money. And so man can design the Taj Mahal or something better than the Taj Mahal, but if we don't have the money to pay for it, it stays on paper and it never becomes a reality. We need to analyze here what are the different considerations. I've been hearing about one plan or the other plan. Uh, when we made our presentation, one of the things I said was, why is it only two? What, why is it one or the other? Are there not any other options out there? I'm not saying there are. I don't know what they are. That's part of our work. But that's what we're going to be doing. And we have a short mandate to do it, so we wanted to share with you, and I promised Damien that we were going to share a bit of a schedule, um, of our project schedule. The Housing Authority has given us, from our point of view, a relatively short period of time to get all of this done. but. This is a schedule, and the schedule currently calls for us to complete our work by the end of August, so that we have a, in addition to what we're doing today and the homework, as I'm calling it, that we have done thus far, we have another set of public meetings, community workshop, which would be, right now, is slated for the third week of July. We understand that there's a desire to have better upfront timing uh, communication about when any meetings happen, so we will be doing that, but right now it's slated for the third week of July, and we are also slated to produce a final report and come back and present that final report to the community by the very end of August. So, while it might seem like a bit, you know, basically less than three months to finish up, it, it's a lot of work to do, but we intend to to keep to that schedule. We have, as I said, already had some meetings tomorrow. We're having additional meetings um, with some government officials so that everybody understands what we're trying to achieve here. Our goal is to analyze what people are calling as one plan being the historic preservation, as Lewis said, another plan being to do a redevelopment of the community, but also look at are there other options in between? Are there other things that we can do? And part of that also is to interact, and as we talked with Ms. Macklemore prior to this meeting, uh, everybody sharing what financial resources exist, what is out there, whether it is the traditional HUD funding or non-traditional kind of funding that might be available to assist the needs of this community. Because one reality is, even if you do nothing, the property will continue to, if you did nothing for the next year, the property continues to deteriorate, you need to fix things that are in need of fixing. Maintenance. So, I'm sorry? We don't have proper maintenance and landscaping. I mean, they're letting it go mm -hmm. so that it will look bad and people will say, oh, those people don't care. It's not us. And I don't think, I've certainly heard nothing that it is here. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it is. Can I ask you a question? Yes, you're, you're employed by Marie County. Uh, uh, Account. Our firm, no, we have been hired by the Marin Housing Authority. Okay, that's the county. But you're employed by them, so you're getting paid. This is well, not a freebie. This is not a freebie. We haven't been paid anything yet so far. It's been nice. We are hoping to be paid for our services. We are hoping to be paid for our services. Yes, ma'am. So, when you deal with acronyms, Tell us what does CBR stand for and what does CSG stand for? Right. CBR Associates is the name of uh, the firm for which I work, uh, of which I am co CEO, and that's just the name of the company. CBR, it was the, to be honest with you, it, it was the first letter of the last name of each of the founding partners, of which originally there were three and then one left. I'm the R in that R. 
when we created it, I thought I'd come up with something better. I never did, and it stuck, and now we do work for HUD. I believe that in the case of CSG, it's essentially the same thing. The first letter of the three last names of the original founders uh, of that firm, and in fact, the head of it is Eugene Slater, uh, who is in San Francisco. Yes, sir. Uh, I was wondering, can you deal with these buildings be handicapped and accessible? Absolutely. Well, first of all, we're not here to build anything. I want to—I I don't want any misunderstandings about our we build things. We're not here. We're not builders. We're not developers. We're not contractors. So we're not here to build anything. We're here to do analysis. But absolutely, under federal law, anything that you are doing, the the regulations from what used to be called ADA Americans with Disabilities Act to Section 504 to what these days is known as UPAS, the Uniform Federal Accessibility Standards, are the rules that govern. And you have to have, anything that you're doing, you have to have a, a minimum percentage of units set aside, not only for residents with disabilities, but for visitors with disabilities. So that, that is a factor in anything that is going to be done, whether it is rehabilitating the existing units, if you don't, and I don't know what number of currently existing units are UPAS compatible or, or uh, approved. I, I don't know that detail. That's part of the information we will be getting and analyzing, but it will be a necessary factor. So, can I ask you something? Have you gone through the project? Have you seen the different houses? I haven't seen it. I have walked through the property previously. I was not part of the tour yesterday that Dan and Ms. McLemore did. I have not gone into any individual units myself. Yes. Hi, my name is Gracie Silver, and I've been resident here for 60 years. I was the first person to move me where I live in the high-rise and build it. Now, what I'm going to find, I'm fine now. What we are worried about now who lives in public houses. Mm -hmm. Now, I have to tell you, Marin City is very divided. Mm -hmm. On the, this side of Cold Drive, there's mm -hmm. the low-income housing. That's where she lives, I live, her live, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, what we're worried now, because of a lot of propaganda going on around here, mm -hmm. they think, they're saying that they're going to take everything that we had over in, in that area of, of Drake Avenue, they could turn it down and then they could start building up much more nicer places. And of course, the low income people uh, won't have nowhere to go. They'll have to leave out of here because of the prices or the ranges of, of the prices and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. The majority, if all, any of you all, half of you just took me, sit right here in this building. And then I just say, some have their own homes. I know all of you. Some have their own homes. Some have, we live, we live in public housing. Mm -hmm. We are here. I mean, I feel pretty old, but I want my grandchildren, if they plan on staying here, have a place they have, and, and look like they're not going to get any richer. Mm. So I'm asking you, will you all destroy our places over there in the club or the housing? Uh, first, let me tell you, ma'am, we're not aware of and we're not part of any plan to do anything here. We are here to analyze the different options. I understand that there is a plan that has been put forth, and I understand the architect is here tonight, for designating the site as a historically preserved, significant uh, development community uh, to, be, to, to receive that designation from the federal government. That, that's one option. That will have some possible consequences of financing, which part of our study has to be, what are those? I understand that there are people talking about redeveloping the site as a mixed income, mixed finance site. But there is no plan. We have not received any such plan from the Housing Authority. And other than people fearing, and I understand fear, and I understand lack of information, creates and generates more rumors and more fear. But there is no plan that we have been made aware of by anybody to do that. We have, even today, heard some numbers out there that, and, and there's, what happens when there isn't in a flow of information is people speculate and people are, are nervous. And anybody's worried about losing their home. Everybody is. So I, I understand what, what you're saying, but I hope that you will see tonight that our process, and Dan will be 
talking with everybody about what we have done and, and what we want to elicit from you tonight. But our process is to get information as well as to provide information to everybody. We've agreed with the resident council that part of what we will be doing is sharing information about what are the possible financial resources that, that can be brought to either improve or do redevelopment or whatever the options are, if there are other options, what are the cost factors that come with it, what's the expectation, what are the timelines, because all of those things are significant. But we are not here to build or tear down anything, and we're not part of any plan that may have been, somebody may have created rumors about, okay? In, so. in, in your analysis, will you be able to factor in, in the political pressure that comes from the politicians or the officials within the county or the development agencies that want to see certain things built down here? And in spite of the fact that we have a large, we have the highest density of homes of any community in the county, will you factor in those things in your analysis? I think if they, I, I'm not going to predispose what we're going to say or not say what we haven't heard yet from folks, but I will say that if there have been situations where there is a considerable factor, we will identify that there is a considerable factor of this nature over here. But right now, mostly, the only plan that we're aware of is that for historic preservation. And well, that's three parts to that. I'm sorry? There's three parts to that presentation. Well, no, I, I understand that there are pieces of it, but as I understand it from Ms. Macklemore, the plan that has been set forth is for a designation for the entire site. And that's what I understood sure. her to say at a meeting we had today. So that's one plan. That's the only plan that I'm aware of. I understand that, and, and we don't control, there is a, a, a review organization that will dictate and, and decide what is and what isn't. Well, what I'm saying is difficult to ensure, you know, self-determination, you know, within the community. There has to be a buffer zone between what political pressures, you know, place upon any developer or any analyst or, or anybody that comes into the community that wants to facilitate this type of social change. If we are aware of it, I have no problem doing so, but I'm also not going to do so on the basis of rumor and in your Sir, if I can, I don't think it's a lack of information that is causing the fear. It's because there's plenty of information. They're, they're, this group is reaping the wind of decades of lack of, of maintenance and of neglect. And it's not just money, it's also land. You've heard a lot about self-determination. You talked about that. You operate within the umbrella of the county. The board of directors of the Marin Housing Authority is the county. So it's basically the county talking the county. Uh -huh. And places like this are the only way that the people who are involved, who are residents of the most affected, impacted, and underserved area, maybe, well, certainly in the Bay, well, all right, Marin, let's start there. <laughs> so I think part of what we need to do at this point not only is listen to the concerns of the people and the fear, because that there are big numbers and a very, very short time. Very short. And I think the ability to be creative, it's not just money that we're looking at, it's also land. How many acres are in the Golden Gate Village site? 30. 33. And how many are developed? 33. Oh, yes. Oh, small percent. Small. Like what? Ten percent? I don't know. Okay, we'll call it. Let's call it five acres. Okay, there are twenty-five acres for a land trust for local people to have their own place in Point Race. The Coast Guard gave up excess land for affordable housing. All these people can fit on another ten percent of the footprint and still have 20 acres left. No, you don't know. 33 acres is the amount of land that the housing authority occupies. There's 30 acres where those houses took up. I don't think and 10 acres And right. 10 acres of flea market. I mean, the yeah. village, or whatever that is, that we have no part in. 
anymore. Well, we've been screwed. I get it. But what I'm saying is that there are potential resources on the Marin Housing Authority land, that 30 acres, that could also serve the community. And it's been done elsewhere. You, you neglected uh, jobs. Jobs too. Jobs too, absolutely. Economic development is critical. And why all this is being done in three months after two years of hearing is mind-bending to me. Really? Three months, and, and let me say that the three months is because I understood from the Housing Authority that they, they were concerned that we dawdled. Um, and that we not get things done efficiently. So we are doing our best, and we were already asked what happens if we're not finished in three months, and we will finish as quickly thereafter as possible. But our goal is to have an analysis prepared for dissemination to everybody, and we will come back in person to present what those findings are within three months. We believe it's doable, we have to work hard, but we believe it's doable, and we have already begun the process as I hope you will give Dan an opportunity, give me one second, Mr. Madam Mayor, you give Dan an opportunity to show you what we, what analysis we have done, what we have looked at already to begin our understanding. We didn't come here today to start on day one today. We have been trying to learn as much as we can about the historical concerns, including the fears and, and concerns of the community. It's, a political, it's a political concern. That's what um, Ricardo talked about. And without the people who really don't vote here, it's such a small minority that the, the supervisors are not accountable to this community at all. At all. So in order for this community to have a constructive role in their own future, you are the key. This room is the key. The concerns, the hopes, the dreams of this community lie here. And to have that and yes, there's been a wonderful working group. And yes, there's been a process of selection. But my concern is this rush to closure and the critical time that we find ourselves in in terms of gentrification as well as Trump in office is putting this, this situation in a far greater peril than it could be. Let me just, I don't disagree with anything that you said except the, the part of rush to closure because our report is not closure. Our report is information for all of you. Our report is information for the Housing Authority, for you, and for any other concerned stakeholder. So look at what are the different considerations that you all have to weigh as a community. So uh, that's the one distinction that I make. I don't believe our report is closed. So I would not, the, the last comment I had, I would not constrain it to the financing. I think there are other resources that can be brought to bear. Okay, that's important consideration. Um, can, I, can, I, can, I, I, um, can I make a quick comment? Um, I just would like to speak to the fears and also to the, to the vision. So I'm a child of this community. My grandfather came here in 1945, worked in the shipyards. I grew up in public housing. So for my, and, and right now I'm living in market ha housing and there's a housing crisis period. One bedroom apartments are going for $2,500 out there. It, it, or, or, what, yeah, it's a lot. And so I think that we're talking about, for me, my part is here, I think there's two things. We don't want to see our elders displaced, like in, in, that's happening in the mission. So that's a very real fear of, of, of people being displaced. And at the same time, I think we want a development where people like myself that grew up here would like to move back. I can't afford the million dollar homes in the hills. And so, but I also don't qualify to move back into public housing because I make too much money. Mm -hmm. So it's like for, for those of us that have a progressive mindset that would really like to see true opportunity here and for the people who are living here to actually benefit from the land that are here. So I'm really speaking to that that I don't want to see our elders displaced, and at the same time, I want to be able to see our young people be, to be able to, to, to live in a place where people look like them and are thriving in businesses and have opportunities to, to be proud of where they live. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to give voice to that. Well, thank you, because that right there is the possible opportunity of a, a, a third option or, or a fourth way to look at things. It's Macklemore, and I know they want to get me off. Dan is really good at talking to people, so they want to give me the hook. But 
Yes. Yeah, no, I just want to say that there are supposed to be two plans, number one. We're talking about in terms of the, of the resident plan as the historic preservation, and yes, uh, I was surprised, uh, to say the least, when uh, Dan came and said your, the application when he met Daniel, and how, how the application is real. <coughs> Those buildings, like uh, Karen said, are who they designed by who they are, were designed by and for and by. They were for the people that were left behind. They were built like public, uh, for permanent housing. As we did our tour, they were amazed not only at the high rises, mm. but also the intricacy in terms of the low rises. Even, I was, you know, he was talking about even the parking lots. How it was so designed, the low rises as well as the high rises. Yes, it's on all that acreage, but you've got to understand it's to family. We have the various open spaces, et cetera, so that you're not on top of one another. Now, we are going to go forward, continue working with you, but in terms of not, and you know, that's where, as our council, we are pledged in, uh, in blood and, and I'm not talking about my blood, uh, to go forth and just really to stand on what Go to Gate Village, what it is, what it represents, but also to be able to find, work with you to find the money for this infeasible language that can make our project go forth. As it relates to tearing down anything, there's no compromise there. I just got to say that. There's no compromise. Don't hate in terms of, oh, that's, uh, they only need five acres of land. You know, they can put the people, and then you can do this, that, and the other with the other. No. That's not how it was designed and respected the way that it was designed, just like our civic center. And that's why I'm saying, too, yeah, the other county, they control it. It's not really Lewis Jordan. Because Dan Nackerman before him, Barbara Collins before him, were given a mandate by our local public uh, county officials to do a job. Those other two went by the wayside. Dan got as far as, you know, coming up with a concept of what it should look like when they tear down the low rises. Mm -hmm. Lewis has brought us to this point, but that's to this point, period. But to, won't still won't be able to have the ability to deliver for the county of Marin. And so I'm, I'm, I'm putting it, like I put out in our little meeting, the, the money that could finance what the people want here the residents who live at Golden Gate Village. Gracie said it very good. There is a divider, a psychological division in Marin City. Mm -hmm. The haves and the haves not. Yeah, the poor, right. we're not only, we're not talking about affordable, but we are 200% below poverty. Huh. So affordable is not affordable oh. at all for the residents of Golden Gate Village, mm -hmm. period. So it is our job to make sure that something, not just a something, but the re renovation and, and the revitalization of Golden Gate Village happens so that we also have that economic development piece. So people can be working, bring back that legacy of why Marin City was built in 75 days. Yes. Really, the whole town, originally. So to bring it, to bring it on back, create the real jobs. Our people still won't be able to make the six figure to be affordable in Marin County, but at least if we could come up from the 200% poverty. Yeah, so now poor people live there. Oh, that's too good for you poor people. You know, it's too good for us. When you look at the a million dollar view, oh, when, by the time we showed him everything, he, was, he said it's about the money. And so we are going, that's where I'm aimed at, about the money. And I put it out there, and, you know, trusting, but I'm also going to be making sure 
that what we say does not get pushed to the side, really. Because that's what happened, truth be told. Truth be told, we could have been into this process if the county was willing to say, let them be here. <laughs> let us be here. We're going to be here. We shall not really be moved. So you can go on with the program, but I just want to put it out there, you know, representing the residents of Golden Gate Village. Because there are residents from Marin City that some that were raised in Marin City and have just as much passion about Golden Gate Village as I do, because that's where they went, we all came from there. But then there's others, the others, who are, you know, who see this as an opportunity for their taxes, you know, more um, property value to go up. Right. And so that's where they're coming from. And like when I showed him yesterday, if anything be torn down, in Marin City, it needs to be the Ridgeway and the Marin City townhomes. That's hey, what's happening. You know, that's hey, not built on solid rock. But they don't want to talk about that. So uh, it's not going to be a walk in the park if you think it is in terms of uh, let's see what we can do here and do there. No, we're talking about historic preservation of the 33 acres that was designed by not only Andrew, but even the landscaping. Housing Authority, from the very onset, did not follow the landscape plan. We want to bring that back. And then we have opportunities to do it. And like I said in the meeting, if the Housing Authority, or Kate Sears, who's been so rude not to even come and meet with us, and she represents us, so it shows me how she feels about us. But, it, you know, it's got to be our way or the highway. That's and we ain't got nothing to lose. People can speak again and again and again, so don't take it to say, folks, you spoke a lot, don't say something again. But I want to encourage everybody to participate. But I want to invite yeah. Dana to bring us into this, because I was very impressed with their approach on how they've been looking at this site. And he has honestly, and Royce can, can, can speak to this, honestly invested a lot of time in understanding the complexity of this site. And we asked these guys to come here and look at the feasibility component of this, but they've gone beyond that and are trying to look at the historic perspective and understand it in a very rich way. So, Ben, if you don't mind, to come can, up and... Can I ask this gentleman a question first? Sure. When you were doing all those uh, studies, did you study Chicago? We have not done an no, analysis did you? for... Back in the back. <laughs> we have not done an analysis for Chicago. We've done well, all the work When they tore down public housing there? You I, I'm aware of that, yes, ma'am. Well, it seems like the thing that $6.5 billion that they're taking out, that should, we should do everything we can to get rid of Trump so we can get that money back. <laughs> <laughs> because he's trying, trying to trying want to build a bridge, a build a bridge, build a wall. <laughs> Yeah. We need bridges. We don't need walls. I don't with you at all. We're seven minutes from the Golden Gate Bridge. We're right off of Highway 101. There are too many jealous and envious yes. people around here that see black people as three-fifths of a man still yes. to this day. And we are people, and we came from a rich continent, and we deserve to be treated right. And if we don't, like she said, our way or the highway, because they're going to go. I'm coming out of retirement. All the warriors. You got to show up to you. Okay. Yeah. And Karen, okay. you say you stay home at these meetings? Do I? So uh, my name is Dan, um, I've been working with the affordable housing communities for about 28 years and uh, 
this is a great turnout. There's a lot of spirit in this room. There's also a lot of anger, and I can hear that. If we could just have your attention and kind of pivot a little bit. We've done a lot of talking, but now it's time for us to do some listening. All right? We have two ears and one mouth. You've heard that before? No. We should listen <laughs> twice as much before we talk. So what we tried to set up tonight is a way for you to talk to us, all of you to talk to us, and for us to listen. And we'll take you through that process. Uh, we might go about 10 minutes or so before we break for food because the break has gone on a little long. So one thing that was for certain, there was a process before we got here. And this is not just us showing up and trying to understand what should we do. We were given information. And we spent a month going over everything we could find about Golden Gate Village. You guys are famous. You're on YouTube. You're on uh, the internet. Uh, we read meeting minutes of every working group meeting. How many people were here during the working group meetings? I'm just curious. About half, maybe even less. Um, so this is a photo of some of those working group meetings. And uh, they happened from January 2015 to July of 2015. A very strict process that RDJ went through. There's a, there's a load of information about what Golden Gate Village residents want. If you are not part of that process, tonight is the bridge for you to join those residents to put in that time and to become part of that narrative, part of that story. And here's how we're going to do that. The first thing on the top of the list of the very first meeting were your guiding principles. Now, I don't know if you knew you had guiding principles. Um, how many knew about these guiding principles? I know Royce is up. Okay, there is a handout that Patty put together that uh, is up here on the screen. But these guiding principles, number one, I'll read them to you. Protect existing Golden Gate households. That really means no displacement. That is the number one guiding principles of this community working group. And I think we can all agree from hearing tonight, that's number one, right? We hear that as your consultants, we hear that. Number two, restore Golden Gate Village economic sustainability. Economics and finances are a big part of this. If the money tumbled down from the sky tonight, you could enact your plan tomorrow. But the money has not tumbled down from the sky. We are consulting to try to find out how that money can be applied to make it work for you. So that's number two. Number three, assure resident participation. Again, we're here tonight to try to build that bridge and listen to you. Number four, preserve historic marineship heritage. We understand the history on how important that was to this community, to this country, and to this world. People gave their lives to build those ships. That history is here, but I can tell you, as a new person walking around the site, I didn't see a plaque. I didn't see anything about that. Now, we'll talk about that tonight. You know, preserving that heritage can start tomorrow by telling the story. Um, Number five, promote high quality open space. I walked around two and a half hours with uh, Royce. Uh, it was a virtual landscape of delight. Um, maybe part of it was you, but part of it was the open space. Um, kids playing, people grilling, the game was on. Um, just amazing open space. And number six is collaborate with outside entities to make partnerships to make, uh, make you stronger. So those are yours, and it's good for you to know that, and it's good for you to know that we know that, that we will be operating with those guiding principles. So maybe you can pick those up, the thing that Hattie handed out, and, 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 and get that out so everybody knows what, what that is. Um, can I add one yeah, to that? part, sure. Oh, number two, you said money doesn't come a lot of the sky. But, caveat to be, you own your own land, the facilities on that land, the money formula changes. Absolutely. Ownership. 
Yeah. You're not put it in there. It's not in there. What do I see? You know what, Ricardo? Hold on to that for two minutes mm -hmm. because you're going to put it there. So that's what we're going to be doing tonight. We didn't plan this, but you hold on to that and we're going to use you as an example, okay? I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, sir. Uh, what do you mean by, by number two? The, the economic sustainability. I don't mean anything about it. We're reporting what the working groups have done. Oh, so, so what does that mean to people? Uh, Did you get a sense of, of what Well, that I think if I can interpret the words, and again, I wasn't part of this process, sustainability means not only be able to fund something to get it done, but it means to have that funding and finance and that economic uh, permanence happen throughout the lifespan, so maintenance always happens. Right, so you're talking about maintenance. I'm guessing that's what sustain. Royce, is that it? Well, the the, the light manufacturing, right? Sustainability for jobs, the creation of jobs. Okay. So, so that the people can make the way. real money. Correct. And again, we're going to be talking about this Thank in like two minutes. Just let me get there for a moment. Yes, question. sir. Uh, when you walk through the Jewish did you yeah. did you notice that there's more houses than parking spots? And did you notice that going straight through Marin City is a double yellow line? And they force people that residents to park across the street and they got to walk across the double yellow line every day. And, and, and it's dangerous. And somebody's going to get hurt. And this is something that the, the county of Marin has been neglecting. I don't understand it. If they're in control or, 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 or they got more power than the federal government, because someone told me that you have to have a, a pocket spot for every unit. Right? Well, here's what we're going to do on that. Well, this is just like I'm Ricardo. Like to you're going to have a moment to write that down. So just keep that moment. Oh, it's stuck in my head. It's stuck in your head. You guys are great. We're going to get there in a moment. Can I say something? Karen, you can well, always say something. About, um, um, <laughs> and you do. <laughs> in March, at the end. I can. When you were talking about preservation of the uh, red ships. We had thought about putting some kind of statue up of the of the ships. You know, kind of part of the ship. When you come into Marin City, you'll see Marin ship. Now when we're here, black people were here. I just got here 40 years ago. But black people are here because of the shipyards. And when it was over, the white people could go anywhere they wanted in the county. For $5,000, they could buy their property. People in Marin City, there was a covenant to keep black people here. And they had to pay $10,000 for the coal houses. Now, you know, it's like the Palestinians being forced and forced enforced by the Europeans. You know, it's not fair. It isn't fair. And we're going to, I'm telling you, something got to happen. Hold that thought as well. We're going to get to this. Just just give me another minute or so. Here's what we're going to do tonight, okay, besides eating. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to allow you to make your comments, but we're going to put them into three categories. And we call this our ESP framework. E is for economics, having to do with money, finances, everything, job creation, things like that. Social, having to do with people, resident life, community, relationships. And P meaning physical, which has to do with parking spaces, open space, buildings, and things like that. And here's how we're going to do it. We're going to do one of these sessions, then we're going to eat, and we'll have two more. What we did is we went through every meeting that you had, some of you who were here, and we color-coded the words and phrases according to those three categories. Everything that had to do with money was green. Everything that had to do with people was yellow, sunshine. Everything that had to do with physical was pink, the red clay. San Francisco, bricks and mortar. So we were able to take this months and months of talk and divide it into three categories. 
And what we're going to do first is we're going to talk about economics. So around the tables, you guys are going to hand out right now two pieces of paper. If I can have those two. Everybody has a pen. If you don't have a pen, raise your hand. You're going to be getting a handout that looks like this. Okay, you see this right here? It has different colors. What we're going to ask you first to do is write down anything that's important to you having to do with economics, having to do with money, having to do with job creation, the innovation hub, 3D printing. Right, Royce? Remember that? Anything having to do with land. There you go. Anything you have to do with money. And what you'll see on the handout, <laughs> these are all the things that the people who went through the working group talked about in regards to economics. So go ahead and hand those out. Hand them out on both sides. So just as a prompt, you're going to get a list. This list will have every word or phrase having to do with economics. You're going to think about what's the most important thing to you. And what we're going to ask you to do is to take a few minutes and write down the most important thing to you. How did you do with economics? Like, I don't want to be priced out of my house. That has to do with economics. If that's the most important thing to you, we want you to write that down. What we are going to do right now is we are going to maybe start on this side of the room. If you feel so moved, I'd like you to stand up and just say, what is the most important thing to you economically? And we'll go around the room. When we're done with that, we're going to get food, and we'll do the next two. Okay? So is it Terry? Yeah. How about stand up? What's the most important thing to you economically? we got to listen now. This is the listening part, the respect part. Okay? We have that. You ready? Go ahead. Real loud. Hiring competent people to do work in the community, also train and hire residents that will keep the cost down and help keep Marin City striving to the top and help keep our children from being slaves in prison. How about that? like to get up and say what's the most important thing economically to them over here? Anybody? You like to get up? Go ahead. Silicon Valley is 10 minutes away. There were 40,000 companies, some startups, and some actually are existing. They have a surplus of capital, and many, like Mark Minioff, there, he's involved with hospitals, but he has the capital, he's going to be $50 million to invest in the community. So you can't even get to Oakland in 10 minutes from San Francisco. So I would invite the community to target, put together a nice proposal, a video piece. She does production of, of videos, put a video piece, present that to the Silicon Valley Board of Directors, and let them know this city's 10 minutes away and have a partnership with this. Let them adopt it and have a partnership where there's training. There's, there's over a, about a million two, two, two jobs available right now. So uh, these are high-end jobs, but there are other jobs that are, are administrative and other supportive. So it's just a great opportunity right next door. Bob, to do that. So. That's really great. If I hug Daryl, but he sat down. Thank you. Um, what is your name? You know? Oh, Shala, Diane Martin. So for me, I see the most important aspect is that economic freedom and economic uh, economic strength is real freedom. So we saw in the case of South Africa, where although they were free politically, because of the economic system, because of the, the Africans did not participate fully in the economic development, there's a lot of problems there. So I really have always seen New York City as being able to be a beacon of sustainability, whether that's with light manufacturing, being a part of the green economy, hiring people here, being able to have those of us in the community that are working on uh, spiritual development and transpersonal development in order to really have a thriving community and import and export with our sister cities as well. And the one thing I would say is also is for the new, whatever's going to happen over at Golden Gate Village, the speculative aspect of investment, 
it should just be eliminated. The fact that your home can be worth this amount and then $10 million next year takes a lot of people out of the housing market. Yeah. 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 Sure, Tara. So there's a structure called Community Development Corporation. So we could actually set up a community development corporation and have, well, maybe the one we have now. I don't know if it is or not. All I'm saying is, set up a community development corporation to give the corporate world. I don't know. So okay. so all I'm saying, so all I'm saying is, corporate capitalism in terms of like, uh, Arson Indies and other businesses have been very successful. Rainbow, that's a health food store in San Francisco, they actually have been around for 40 years, and these people are, are very wealthy from actually owning their own business. So it's a great opportunity to raise the economic IQ and then bring people from the level of where they are in gradient all to the level of actually the quarter. Sure. Yeah. A lot of opportunity here. Michael. Here, I just want to uh, let my brother know that we do have a community development corporation and I chair it. Okay. And it's working. Okay. And I only say not because I chair it, because you should know who's who's on the board of any agency that's in the community and hold us responsible. But for the last two years we've been doing the work and it has maybe has had a history of some uh, questionable services that was provided to the community. It's not happening on my watch now. My group right. have is chairing it so you can talk to me afterwards. But I want to say one other thing around economic is around educating our children because it starts with and we need a decent school district here right. in order to support that process so we are having some sustainability. And one other thing, our foundation, community, uh, what is it, the great community, foundation and others, we need foundations to really, when we talk about sustainability, to really give some funding to allow us to sustain our program that we, 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 we have instead of every year or two have to go back and beg for a few dollars in order to have a program that's not promised to be funded the following year. So those are some of the things that can also Well, uh, thanks for your service. Yeah, right on. Yes, ma'am. Representing the schools. <laughs> our local control uh, accountability plan. We have put in place a community school. We're right now in the process of hiring. We just hired a, our parent liaison. Stand up. Thank you very much. We're also looking now for a um, liaison for our uh, schools that's going to be working as a facilitator to bring all the resources to the school as they need to to fulfill those areas of deficits in our schooling. We're in the process of interviewing math teachers, science teachers, art teachers, counsel. So we are now laying the foundation for a school. If we want it to work, we will have the pieces in place. Wonderful. Thank you. Other on this side, yes, sir. What's your name? Uh, Trevor Plasio. Trevor. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to honor the most beneficent and our ancestors. Uh, the ancestors that were the ones that were placed here some 75, 80 years ago. And as black people, it's important that we should never start any discussion of this great importance without first saying thank you, most beneficent for being alive. Thank you, ancestors, for striving and leading so that we can't be alive. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. You. Amen. Amen. Um, we would uh, definitely start with education, sir. But definitely, if I can teach my child anything, it is entrepreneurship program, right. capital, venture, money to make it happen. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, MK. So, live, work, housing, ownership, sustainable economic inclusiveness, collaborative economic partnerships and STEM development, educational partnerships with colleges and universities in the area, um, 
inclusion in biochem and biomed fields, and also in green technologies. Yes. Yes. You brought all that in that little space. Thank you. Uh, anyone else over here before we transition? Yes, go ahead. Lita. Um, one of my thoughts had to talk to people about what happens when people get work, that are in public housing and get work and their income goes up and then the fear of not being able to stay in public housing. So I know there's been talk and it's in there about seven times mixed income and how that allows people who may start at a certain economic level to remain in affordable housing. Yeah, that's something that I think you touched on earlier. Yeah. Are we going to skew over here? Because, yes. Oh, Gracie. Okay, mine is. Everybody here, Gracie? <laughs> okay, mine is for. I'm just going to know what you're saying. Mine is for no income. Mine is for no income. Because I live in no income. I need housing for low income. Also, jobs for low income, training for these young people, and what I'm saying, training for the young people. You give these children a job in the summertime, and then in the wintertime, they go back to school, but in some way, I'm saying, education is one thing, but training is another. And if they start in the schools, they start training these kids to do different things. For instance, take for instance, Half of these kids don't even know how to pick up garbage out of the street. They think it's a disgrace, but it's a trade. Half of kids don't even know how to take a broom and sweep off where I live and sweep off the patio because they figure that's a public housing. Well, see, public housing, they put that junk there. Our children put that junk there. Train our children, let our children say, either clean up or get out. Golden Gate Village. She's responsible for Were you the winner of the uh Are you saying? Wow. Wow. I heard the 
that we once had our own um, post office. We once had our, had our, and I used to work here in 91, 92, right here in this building with Marie Haynes. I was a volunteer until we both left in, uh, two years ago. But anyway, I heard a, I heard a lot from the seniors that used to sit on the couch, the couch man, and tell me their history. A lot of them are gone. They grew up here as children and teenagers. They came with the parents that originally came. And they told me a lot about this community. And but for God's grace, I've been a five-year resident. And uh, it's a privilege. This is a unique community. But that's what I want to show out there. Over and over again, gentrification happens because the well-off blacks do not invest their money in, in businesses in their own community. It brings jobs here. We can create our own jobs. You know? So um, I just want to throw that out there. I don't know what anyone's financial position is. I'm not indicating that. But it's an idea. You know? Bring in our own businesses. And you write that down. Well, actually, all I put was black businesses. And <laughs> good. That's good. All right. Other ideas for part of Economics. Give her card or our attention over here. Yes, please. Uh, you know, I might be the only one talking about land ownership and how important land ownership is, you know, to survival of the community and particularly low income communities. I was around, let me paint a picture for you. I was around when that shopping center was turned over to developers. Huh. I was around when some weasels came in. That's right. I mean, they came in, they took away, they broke a 99-year land lease. Al Fleming. They built up, they borrowed money from 15 different banks. They traded ownership of it, you know, between different ownership. Took away millions, I mean, literally millions. Two million here, three million here, and pennies came back into the future. Sold us out. What else? Then, as far as land ownership is concerned, there are 250 land trusts around the nation. Hmm. You don't know what land trust means? That means that the community, us, you know, folks, own the land. We own the facilities. We own the houses. You know, and if you're really creative, you can build these land trusts up to be anything that you want. Green manufacturing hubs. Um, you know, the pay for the preservation, no problem, because you control the land. I can't overemphasize how important it is for low income, particularly African American people, to try to own their own land. Our 40 acres and a mule right here. Yeah. Huh? Our 40 acres and a mule yeah. right here. This is for that be it. But uh, on this thing, you said, what we heard, and I don't know, maybe Lewis did this. I wrote that. Oh, he said, land, just, just land and trust can be difficult in transforming land ownership. That's not my experience. That's not my knowledge. And I would not, you know, promote that. Land trust can be formed. The lot of the people own the land. They can own it. They, they can control the men who live there, control the rent, and they control a lot of the other amenities that can go into land ownership. And I keep saying it over and over again, and I will say it until I disappear. We've got to own some land. Yes, sir. Okay, can I ask you? Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Anybody else want to talk about the economics of money before we go to the next one? Well, eating. Yes. What is your name? My name is Melissa. Melissa. Born and raised in Marin. I've been in Marin my entire life. Thank you for coming. Lucky enough to have bought place down there that is all land still is sinking as Roy said. But my problem is I see all these meetings and everything and they all say we're gonna hire from within, we're gonna promote within all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. My husband owns a black business. They gave him a job one time mm -hmm. and that was the only time they gave him a job. Mm -hmm. They don't continue it. Or they'll say we'll hire you and then they fire you mm -hmm. and you don't get hired again. That's right. We have to be able to say we're gonna hire black hire from Marin City right. and continuously hire from Marin City. Yes. We also need to say that we're going to train Marin City residents right. and give them a job 
and tell them people I'm able to keep this job for a substantial period of time, a year, two years. There's a kind of contract saying that. Because what they do is they do all these trainings and everything. I see all these guys get these jobs in construction. First rainy season, they're gone, and they never come back. And that's not fair to our young black men who are trying to raise their families in Marin County. So that's what I would like to see. I would like to see if able to go on and on. As far as home ownership, as far as Ms. Gracie on all these elders in here, they're in their place, but they're not allowed to turn their place over to the next family member. That's right. That's not fair to them. That's the home. For some people, that's the only home they grew up in. And for you to say, okay, your, your mother has this, is deceased now, you got to move. It's not fair to them. Mm -hmm. I, I want to see that happen. I appreciate that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next letter is letter S. S is for social. You're going to write down on your sheet in the yellow things like what we heard through the working group, no displacement, celebrating history, sense of community, what does that mean to you, sense of community, relationship between the residents and the Marin Housing Authority, what's important to you socially, when you think of yourself living in Golden Gate Village? What is the most important thing to you socially? Is it your relationship with your neighbor? Is it your safety? Is there an educational component? So take the time to write down in the yellow what's the most important thing to you socially. We could have stayed here for another half hour and you would have kept talking to your neighbor. Social, the social power of this community Maybe your greatest currency, or at least one of your greatest currencies. You see that walking around, you see that with the families. The hospitality that we received yesterday, being here for four and a half hours walking around, second to none. Okay? How do we leverage that? How do you leverage that in getting something done? You do that by coming to this meeting tonight and keeping hope alive, right, right? So keeping hope alive. Hope is alive. We don't have to keep it. Alive. It's alive. So what we're going to do, we're going to go around the room and we're going to ask you again to tell us what the most important thing to you socially is. Okay? You just want to jump on. Go ahead. Your move. Okay. So community art projects to bring people together. Live work art exhibits, outdoor theater, uh, you know, garbage art. Uh, community collaboration, literacy through the arts, collaborating with the library, with the schools, with all the different organizations, and uh, just using the arts. I see people dancing in the streets, gather we're gathering people, gathering in the streets, doing art in the streets, canvassing, you know, all out there. Music. So, uh, music, well, but this, this is the thing that out of African culture and African communities, that is where we come from. That is that. The, the ghettoization of us has changed a lot of that. But I would say that the arts are definitely where we come from, and I see the arts as being a big part of who we are. Thank you very much. MK, are you raising your hand to go next? Uh, the dissemination of factual, timely information regarding rules, regulations, rights, and responsibilities of both the residents and NGOs and government agencies that can act with the residents. We need transparency. No, thank you. Somebody said that during a previous meeting, but transparency is something that we need socially, right? No more hidden agendas, right? But also, where can you, you know, data has not been readily available. With technology today, on everybody's phone, they should have every bit of data that you presented, that everyone else has presented, and that everyone will present in the future. That data should be available at in your fingertips. Precisely. Thank you. Do you write that one down too? Good. All right. Who else on this side? Daryl. Um, well, we lived in Oakland. We had a group called Simba, which was the, the African American men would help African American boys become men, and the women too. So I would say create a Simba-like organization where in our community, all the men, whether they're uncles or not, 
that they actually work with the boys to, to come of age, you know. Amen. In the Jewish community, we have our missions and baptisms. Have that structure, you know. It doesn't have to be part of other, other groups. So that's what I want to do. Go from within. All right? That's a phrase I heard. Uh, go ahead. I think that if we had a job, if we had someone like Sister Macklemore or uh, Sister Gracie right here, if we could have them as an elected official um, that represents Marin County, mm -hmm. uh, I mean Marin City and the county, everything else we're talking about would be and run for public office. Yeah. Amen. Go. Get the signs out. Hello. I'll be there a second, Karen. <laughs> intergenerational something happen with the, the grandparents, the parents and the youth all working together whether it's in the garden or around food, around the art. something like yeah. around art, something like that but all of us all together at the schools, at the senior center, the CDC <laughs> reading program with the youth reading to an adult, 
or the old elder reading to a youth and preparing a delicious meal while they're doing so. MK, I know you, I got your um, support on that. Do you know the piece of paper write that down? I know, but I, yeah, give me one. Those are wonderful thoughts. Okay, on this side, Karen, socially, what's the most important thing to you socially? Socially. Socially. Uh, right now, in 75, I go to the doctor. Uh -huh. We have a health and wellness center here. I stopped going to the one up in Green Bay because we have one right here. The one that we have, we need to expand. <coughs> The church that burned down Village Baptist has all that land that they could donate to the Health and Wellness Center so that they could build a nice edifice for people to go to. Now I know there's a lot of greed with these preachers because I see them on the church every Sunday and they are raking money in so they can afford to give that land to a needy thing that the community can benefit from. We need a real health clinic here. Something nice and modern, you know, like one of those houses hidden way back up in the back. You know, we need something beautiful. We need something that we can use. I mean, there are senior citizens here that can't even get a ride to the place. You know, uh, transportation. Is it, it doesn't exist. We could also have some young men create a taxi service. And that used to be a, you ever seen those London taxis? Those London taxi cabs? We could get about four or five of them in here. And that, have you seen them? I haven't seen it, but I haven't. You gotta come on on. They are beautiful. And they would work because we're unique and they're unique. And we need to have services. People can go to the pharmacy for five dollars. In Chicago they have a thing called Jitney cabs. And you could yeah, and you could pay a little bit and go over here and then another cab would come and you pay a little bit and go back there. So it can work. Thank you. Socially. Barbara, you're up. <laughs>
Ricardo, is your hand up? Thank you. Yeah, oh, well, you know my hand is up. <laughs> Quiz. <laughs> Does anybody know, want to take a guess, how many youth services, I mean, youth, how many youth initiatives are uh, actually operating in this community today? <laughs> anybody want a wild guess? Anybody? Anybody? Two? You? No. How many initiatives are serving youth in this community? This is one of those hidden factors. Yeah, more people building through us. Performance starts with relationships. Yeah. 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 Well, tell them for real. I mean, there are actually, there are actually 20. No, oh, 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 hold on, the answer is there are actually 24. You know, it doesn't seem like it, but there are actually 24 youth initiatives that are serving you. If you start adding up the, the bridge, the gaps, the after school programs, the recreational programs, the school uh, uh, king clubs and everything like that, it adds up. So there's a lot of money swimming around the community, right? In those, in those well, it's a lot of uncoordinated, you, you, you know, activities and things like that. Let me, let, uh, another freak out term, equity. Social equity, and this is important to us because this is the work that we do in the community. I'm not going to tell you how many social services, programs, projects, and activities exist in the community. I'm going to keep that a secret. If you want to know about it, just you know, come up to me. Ask me, Ricardo, how many of these programs are out. But these programs are known for their lack of equity. And I think Michael kind of alluded to it a little bit. You know, we cannot compete with other communities because we don't have resources, capacities, the fundraising mechanisms, the land ownership, and things like that. So what's important to me is bringing the equity of all these services and programs up to where we can be like other communities. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, it's mine is a get together, a social moment. Uh, we have a beautiful Rock and Graham Park up here. And different nationality of people live here in Marin City. It's a low, a Marin City, low income people. So uh, everybody here in Marin City, not only from the low income, everybody here should get together. For instance, if there's a, a teacher who wants to have a festival at the Golden Gate Park, of a Rock and Graham Park, let them all get, let us, everybody know. Not only say, oh, we ain't going to love the kids there. Or either, uh, okay, yesterday, yesterday uh, Saturday, I went to uh, uh, the layup, and I had never attended a Filipino festival. Beautiful. Food good, music good, and everybody had a good, had a good time. And this one of the there was all nationality people was there. They didn't look at me and say, well, she's black, or she's going to go. But what I'm trying to say is, we live here, let's all, everybody come in here. If you don't matter what act, nationality. If you want to be together with your group of uh, people, uh, racial people, and not something, let everybody know that we have, not to say that, oh, we're going to be Asian, and stuff like that. So let's get all of this prejudice stuff out. All right, it's time for that. It's time. Thank you. Yeah, there are, uh, I just want to make one announcement. If you are leaving because we are after 8 o'clock, we would greatly appreciate having those pieces of paper so we can read what you wrote. If you want to, you can put your name on it. You don't have to. But it would help us if you could leave those on the table before you leave. Do you want me to What's that? Your point. Yes, we are going to download this and get that to the uh, resident council so you will have this PowerPoint electronically somehow. And then, then, then one or two more over here, and then we want to do the raffle. And in case okay. people don't really want a raffle, <laughs> so I'll, take, I'll take it home. Just a quick point, Royce, or whoever's going to be doing the resident council distribution, just like you said, I think this is a time to bridge. I'm not on the residential resident council mailing list, but I certainly would like to get the download of these uh, slides. So if you could make this, the people who attended here, a group and and give us notices about opportunities and the information that would be great. I'm going to uh, 
defer that over to the housing authority because they don't give us money for all of that. I hear you. <laughs> Are your email addresses in the side? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so we can make, we can make that happen. Great. Uh, Dr. Thornton, you had your hand up. I just wanted to say, if we want to do something right away, the uh, under the Health and Wellness Clinic, we have the uh, Defenders group of young men who are entrepreneurial, mm -hmm. and they're selling something we all use, toilet paper. <laughs> okay. okay, and cleaning supplies. So these are our young, uh, Derek, you probably come to do a presentation to any group, and this is something we can do immediately. The other thing, gardening. Look around the community. Our young men could be making a whole lot of money, and young women, cutting grass for this community. And you cannot find a gardener that looks like us. Amen. And, and Zara, the paper, will be selling at the Juneteenth Festival coming up on the 17th. So it will be an opportunity for us to all support our entrepreneurs. Nice. All right, we're going to do the last letter. Are we going to do the do the wraps first? Okay, everyone, come on now. On everybody's piece of paper, if you still have it, one more thing, which is at the very bottom. This is called the wish call. Wish call. What we'd like everybody to do is finish the sentence. That starts with, I wish Golden Gate Village. Give dot, dot, dot. I wish Golden Gate Village. And you finish that sentence. We'd like you to write that down on your piece of paper. And then we're going to hear what you say, and then we'll be able to all go along. But this is about the future. Hold on a second. Go first. Everybody take a minute and just finish that sentence. I wish Golden Gate Village. What do you wish for? Uh, with us tonight is the architect who wrote the application for the National Historic Register application. It's Daniel over here. Daniel, you have to say Thank you, Daniel Roberts. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. He's a very humble gentleman. He's got an excellent job. So, yeah, let's, let's really do it. Okay, now, I'd like to start. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, Daniel, oh, was the next to the bad
we will be sharing with you. So all of this, as we said, is an effort at getting educated by you about your concerns and your fears and your efforts and your considerations and us helping to educate you about what the different options that may exist for whatever option happens with this community to be. <laughs> and if you can have your papers on the table on the way out. Yes, Dina. Just one thing. My understanding, and it might be helpful to get a report on how Hunters Point worked with their rebuilding um, and kept the and people, residents in the area. My understanding was that was a really important part of it so that people weren't displaced. Um, and, and I mean, you're displaced used in a lot of ways. I, I think we can look into it. I don't know the answer off the top of my head, although I'm very familiar, well, relatively familiar with Hunter's Point. But uh, I do believe that people were moved, but there were, it, was a, it was an effort as an activity to replace, to move people uh, ideally once, or but at least in a structured way. It was not, here's a voucher, pretty senior depth. Everyone was given a chance to stay on site. Some people did take a voucher and move off site, and then everyone is offered the chance to come back. But most people stayed on site. They've now completed all of their, their moves, so everyone is, is back. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good model. Yeah. It's just, it can happen. Because that's one of the things people really worry about is that if there is any new building or renovation, or major renovation. Because that's how justification works. Yeah, right. They are supposed to have community meetings. And so I would not have all the people to walk. Sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah.